James Franco was on a red carpet, interviewed by some facile, uh, you know, interviewer. You know, what are you wearing? Who are you with? And then the kind of toss-off question was, are you reading anything interesting? And James Franco walked away, and then he came back and said, yes, I'm reading this incredible book about Celine Dion by this Toronto culture writer, Carl Wilson. Instantly, Carl Wilson was in demand, and within hours was on the Stephen Colbert show. And we are so happy to have him here this evening to interview uh, Stuart. Stuart, who was born in 1977, but somehow was able to time travel. And uh, so I get the feeling that maybe he might be from uh, another planet. So I'd like to welcome to the stage both of them. Carl Wilson, Stuart Henderson, and uh, we'll make the scene. Stuart, I'm really happy that you asked me to come here and um, have this conversation with you. Um, personal story, I was having a conversation with my mom, who went to U of T um, in the early 60s, mm -hmm. and she's a big folk music fan. She just sort of mentioned one day that she'd never actually gone to the folk clubs in Yorkville when she was right. a student, and I was really puzzled by that. And so I said, why? And she said, well, it's, it was your dad, actually. Um, my dad's from, from Winnipeg um, and had moved here to do law school. And she was like, your dad was afraid to go there. <laughs> 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 and funny. it seems to me, it seemed to me like a, a perfect example of the way in which these kinds of myths and fantasies and, and fears that you discuss throughout mm -hmm. the book um, impacted people's relationship with what was happening. You know, blocks away from where they were going to school. Given, as Charlie mentioned, that you were born in 77 and therefore wasn't around for the action or even the aftermath of the action, what was it that sparked your personal fascination with Yorkville? I found myself as a teenager uh, perhaps perversely fascinated with the 1960s and more interested in the 60s really than um, my teenage decade, the 90s. It always comes down to music for me, you'll find. But uh, as much as I like some of the new stuff, I loved, you know, what I was hearing on Psychedelic Sunday on Q107, and I would seek out those records. So, you know, by the time I was like 13, I was trying to grow my hair out, and I was trying, you know, I was buying tie-dye shirts and um, kind of playing at hippie. I was just really aware of this stuff, and there was this resonance for me um, culturally, and it drew me to that stuff in a way that I wasn't that drawn to um, pop culture. Uh, once I hit university and began to study cultural history and began to study, I studied at Dalhousie and then at McGill for a master's degree, I couldn't help but feel drawn to the Canadian counterculture. What must it have been like in that period? Uh, because I probably would have been there. I would have gone. Um, you know, I, I could see myself have, having tried to be a part of this thing. Uh, and then I started asking myself the question, yeah, but what role would I have played in it? Um, so when it came time to do the PhD thesis and I decided it upon uh, Yorkville as the subject, I was shocked that there was no academic study of it at all, really. Uh, I, I, that was the main question, you know, who would I have been? Where would I have gone? Uh, so in other words, what, what attracts people to certain scenes at certain times? How do they get constructed? Um, what makes them legendary, you know, in, in, in the way that Yorkville has become, I think, legendary? Mm -hmm. Uh, and so, the, you know, I just, I, the more I looked into it, the more complicated it got, and the more I recognized that I had no idea if I even would have liked it, <laughs> you know? And uh, that complexity was really attractive to me. Um, so thanks, Stuart, and thanks to all of you. Thank you so much, all of you, for coming. It's great. Oh, he's a perfect stranger, like a cross between himself and...